Welcome here and today I have a very special video. Now I'm really sorry that I haven't uploaded in this past week. I've been dreadfully sick for over a week to the point where I actually lost my voice completely. Now my voice is pretty much back. Um, I do slightly have the sniffles. I kind of have a cough but I'm healthy enough to not have to edit out all that junk on camera so I'm brave enough to sit in front of it again. So I'm really sorry I've been absent but during my absentee Ism, I discovered that I reached over a hundred subscribers. Thank you so much. But in, um, I wanted to do something special for it. So, uh, I kind of thought for a while, I was like, what can I do? It's only a hundred subs. I, I don't really have the money to do a giveaway. I want to do something simple but special. So I figured, why not do a Q and A for um, to mark our one hundred subscriber goal. Um, so let's get started. Oh, wait, I have a very special guest. It's our little channel mascot, Nubbins. I just love him so much, so I kind of decided to bring him in here. He is now the channel mascot. All hail Nubbins. So anyways, we'll start with the easy one. The easy one is, what is my name? Well, my name is Mio Lammers, and I am 19 years old. Some people think it's Neo with an N. It's not. <laughs> it's Mio with an M. Think me with an O at the end of it. So that is my name. That is my age. I do have quite a few questions on my phone, and I'll be trying to answer them. Um, one of the questions I actually have a nice, lovely list for, just so I didn't forget like any details. And um, maybe kind of wanting to stretch this video for time, just gotta practice hitting that 10 minute mark, you know? But let's get right into it. Gotta unlock my phone first. So, question number one. Hey Angel, do you play competitively or are you just a collector? I actually play casually, although I do TO at my locals. Um, I only TO at my casual locals now. I used to do my competitive locals, but then my locals became an official OTS, so they had to start putting stuff into the system, which means I'm not the TO anymore, but more of a timekeeper. However, this is a good thing because it does mean I get to play. I do sometimes play competitively, but I do prefer the more casual scene because I love playing for fun. And that's not to say that competitive players don't have fun playing the game and winning. It's just that whenever I play for fun, most of the time it means that I like to goof around. I like to be like, how dare you hit me for a thousand life points, take it back. And I'll just sit there and dead stare the at them until they go, hmm, no. <laughs> I, like, I like to be silly when I duel. So that's why I prefer to be more of a casual player. Um, also, losing sucks, you know? It's really heartbreaking whenever you lose because it's like, yeah, I'm gonna do really good with this deck and I put a lot of effort into it. And then whenever you lose, it's just like, oh. So I play more casually. You know, just keep things lighthearted. Oh, I do collect a little, kind of. So our next question is, for question number two, what do you do when you play a total anime duelist? like one who is way too over the top and energetic. Energetic. Ooh, can't speak today. Uh, Nod, who is my boyfriend, and I actually have a term for anime duelists. We call them legendary duelists. And legendary duelists are people who are either ignorant of the game or total trolls. They're either huge anime fans or just there to make jokes, right? But if you ever meet a huge anime fan, you know, the guy who walks into your locals with or without a duel disc and almost always with unsleeved cards, be prepared for the best moment of your life. And you know what? If they walk up to you and go, I challenge you to a duel, <laughs> you gotta play them. And if you're not playing them, at least watch. Now remember, if you do play them, get in the character. But if you're not brave enough to get in the character and go along with it, just sit there and laugh and giggle and whatnot with it. Just let them do their thing. Another huge tip is don't make them angry. When they get angry, oh my lord, when they get angry, I've seen people throw their decks. 
I've seen them start cursing just madly. So most of the time you just want to let them have fun. You know you're going to win in the end anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but if you ever meet a legendary duelist, pull out your phone, put it on YouTube. We love to watch that stuff. Actually, I think, I'm pretty sure we have a video from the time that we met a legendary duelist. I might add that to the end of this video. If I can find the clip, hopefully I didn't delete it. Um, but yeah, if you ever meet a legendary duelist, either play along with it or just sit back and let it happen. Okay. Our next question is, what is your absolute favorite card? I actually don't have a favorite card, um, but on Invoked 101, I did a video with Nod about our favorite cards. He actually has a... My bangs are all over the place. He actually has a favorite card, which is Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, but I don't have just one card in particular. I love so many different artworks. I love just the memories I have from so many different cards. I can't choose one because they're all my babies and I love them and they're inside my heart forever, you know? So they're in the collection binder though. Um, I do collect them. Let's see. Uh, I did get asked a lot if I would be up for a collab. I'm going to say no for now because I'm still working on my consistency with this channel. And until I really get the ball running on what this channel is going to be, I don't really want to put myself out there um, by doing content on other people's channels until I know that I'm settled and set in stone with what this channel is going to be and I'm going to keep it going and all that, you know? I also don't think I really have the equipment to do that. Um, like, unless it's a voice call where I use a Guitar Hero mic, which is actually what we use for whenever we do podcasts and um, just over the computer interviews. Uh, until I get proper equipment, I'd rather not do a collab. Let's see. Our next question is, what difficulty do you have as a Yugi Tuber? So, like, what difficulties do I face as a Yugi Tuber? Um, I think the most difficult part of being a YouTuber is the fact that you know there's going to be a lot of different opinions out there. Putting yourself on camera and saying, hey, this is my opinion or this is how I view things is always going to be scary, whether you're doing it for Yu-Gi-Oh or vlogs or like puzzles for crying out loud or Gundam. It doesn't really matter um, what you're doing on YouTube. The fact that you're going on YouTube and being like, hey, this is my personality. This is my opinions and stuff. You're always going to have people that judge you for that. And me being a very soft soul, I do get a little sensitive, but um, I'm not afraid to put my foot down and, be, and it actually properly explain why I view certain things a certain way. So I guess the most difficult part about being a YouTuber is saying these are my opinions and um, knowing that there's going to be people out there that even if you say of course it's perfectly fine for you to have your opinions and I would like to hear your opinions, they're going to try to change your mind no matter what. Um, also, I have like huge anxiety so sitting in front of the camera is really awkward for me. Uh, that's another difficult thing for me is sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> Let's see. Next question is, what's your favorite casual deck? Okay, so my favorite casual deck is Speed Droids because no matter what, you can't like not have fun playing Speed Droids or at least I've never had anyone not like have fun playing Speed Droids. I would take um, Speed Droids regionals and if I didn't like when I hardly knew anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! I would just kind of sit there in the corner waiting for people to finish their game and it didn't matter if they won their game or lost their game they would come play casually with me and they would pl pick up like my Madolce deck or they would pull out like their Destiny Heroes or something and they would play against Speed Droids and it didn't matter if they won or lost in that moment they would have the biggest smile and the best time and it didn't matter if I won or lost either Speed Droids are just such a goofy, fun deck, and yet they do so much craziness that no other deck should be allowed to do because, Jesus, it would be broken. They're just a bundle of fun, you know? And I, I absolutely love playing it. What's your favorite deck of all time? Okay, so originally my favorite deck of all time was Vendreds. R.I.P. Vendreds. 
now it's just kind of like a black hole in my heart. It hurts so much what the TCG did to that deck. It didn't deserve it. Um, and there's just so much that, that could have been done to save it, and they took it in a completely wrong direction. So, after a while of realizing that Vendreds were basically dead, yes, they're still playable, but they're just never gonna get any better, most likely. I don't know, 30 years from now, maybe. <laughs> um, I dropped it as my favorite deck of all time, and it hurt really badly the day that I said they were not my favorite deck anymore. Because um, they were the deck that got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! It's the deck that... It's the whole reason I'm sitting in front of the camera right now. Um, my favorite deck of all time now is Medulce's. I just have such a soft spot for that deck. It's really good. Um, it's really cute, it's really fun, it has the best parts of wanting to win and the ability to win and the ability to just push past your opponent's plays with the ability to be a completely casual, completely silly deck at the same time. There's so many different builds that you can do with Medulce's to make it more lighthearted, more fun, more OTK heavy, and more powerhouse. And I just, I love the directions I can take this deck. I can take it to new heights, I can take it to new lows, I can, I can alterate the deck and put new weird stuff in it. I love what I can do with the deck and I love how I feel when I play it. It just makes me really, really happy. Okay, so our next question is, what's going to be your next milestone video and what will it be about? Okay, so since I haven't reached my next milestone, which I guess my next milestone will either be at 500 or at 1000, um, hopefully, maybe I'll get there. I, I'm not really sure. Hopefully at that point I'll be able to do a giveaway of some sorts, because that would be really, really good. Um, but I don't know since I'm not there yet. I haven't seen, to my, I haven't seen my channel blossom enough to really go, yep, yeah, this is the kind of video we're gonna do, you know? So I guess I'm just gonna have to let it happen when it gets there because just like this video right now, I didn't really think about it. I didn't really go, yeah, I'm gonna totally reach 100 subs in a month. That's gonna happen. Cause Invoked 101 took three months to reach 100 subs. So I, I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready for this. I didn't think about it, but then it took me a little bit of thinking and I came up with a video for it. So I guess we'll just see what happens when we get there. All right, so we have two more questions left. Let's do the big question. What's the most gothic Yu-Gi-Oh card in your opinion? Okay, so this one is vague, and maybe I'm gonna stretch this out for a little bit of time, but the truth is I really wanna get into it more than just, oh yeah, this card looks kinda gothic. I wanna talk about it in more depth. I mean, that's what this whole channel is about, right? Discussions. So let's let's sit down and let's talk about gothic Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So, time for the list. All right. So, if we're going to talk about gothic stereotypes, what people think about when they think the gothic community and what a goth is without actually doing research on it, I would say cards that kind of represent that stereotype are after genocide, um Urgent Ritual Art, and the beginning of the end because that card can't get any more black, right? All the black in gothic communities, right? Um, so those would be my gothic stereotypes because a lot of people, whenever they think like goth and what it is, it's like it's sacrificing goblins or whatever, bunnies and stuff, right? And it's all black clothes all the time and darkness inside your head and, and death and destruction. But that's not really what a goth is, um, because if it was, I would look like those cringy 14 year olds, you know the video I'm talking about, right? But instead I'm like, cheese. Um, so let's talk about gothic style. And remember that Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't really represent IRL gothic style, but I'm gonna go with the cards that are closest to IRL gothic style. So remember these aren't pure representations of what it is. Um, so let's start with gothic lollies, because Konami obviously has a huge thing for lollies. I don't know if you could tell or not, but let's start with gothic ones. We of course have Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Um, 
Obviously, we have Ghost Trick Witch, which is basically just Madolce Magiline if she wore all black, and Ghost Witch, uh, Ghost Trick Mary. Um, you know, all the frilly fraying dresses, the younger looking. By the way, a lolly is not necessarily a child. Most lollies are actually adults, so that that's a huge, you know. But anyways, <laughs> so those are some of our gothic lollies. Um, for pastel goths, we have um, Vampire Sucker, of course, you know, very pastel, but at the same time, you know, very edgy. Um, for cyber goths, the, this one is probably the least like the IRL um, styles, but we have Backup separate, backup Secretary and Backup Operator, um, as well as Doomstar Magician, which is probably my favorite cyber goth. Um, we also have our Steampunk goths which is like Galatea, the Orcus Automatons, and uh, Witchcrafter Smita, which honestly I think that that card's more just basic steampunk than actual like steampunk goth, but I, you know, it's one of the few cards I could think about. Now we're talking about like standard goth, we have Witchcrafter Hain, Vampire Fraulein, I sold Bell of the Underworld, um, Revenge, uh, Revenge Red Slayer, and you're thinking, he's not dressed in black, but baby, look at that latex suit, you know? Nothing screams standard goth than a latex suit, especially in the stereotypes, right? And then we also have Adreus, Keeper of Armageddon. That card looks pretty neat. It's one of the cards that I honestly just discovered today. Uh, Nod told me about it. And then, of course, we can't forget the Dark Lords, right? We have Itchel and Morningstar. They look pretty rad. But whenever it comes to gothic card and, like, what I think of when I think gothic card, like, the best gothic card and the representation of it, this one's going to throw you guys off a little. I think of Ruined Supreme Queen of Oblivion because... Goths don't wear all black all the time, but when I see this card, I see empowering woman, I see tall stature, I see alternative, I see um, that dark side, but that strength, but that, that's not who necessarily she is all the time. I just absolutely love this card's art. It's beautiful, it's dark at the same time, which honestly I think perfectly describes like what a goth is. It's beauty and friendly and just weird and alternative, but yet dark. There's that dark side in it, right? That's what makes it mysterious and attractive, right? So Ruin Supreme Queen of Oblivion is probably the most gothic card in my opinion, just because she's that strong, intense, just spirit about her and damn is she hot, right? So, that's probably some of the most gothic cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Please remember that these don't necessarily represent what a goth is or what the different categories and styles of goth is. That is a completely different video for a completely different channel, which I do not own. But um, hopefully I answered your question and I didn't mispronounce any of the card names. Um, but let's do our last question. So our last question is, if you had to upload a deck profile, what deck would it be? All of my deck profiles go on to Invoked 101 because um, this channel, oh gosh, when I made this channel, it was simply because Invoked 101 started as my idea. It was a scrapped, it, it was, it built, eh, words. It was built off of a scrapped channel that Nod had with a few of his buddies called Team Northwest Warriors. That channel died and it sat there still and unuploaded and untouched and unloved for like at least a year. And after Nod graduated and I started to learn about Yu-Gi-Oh, I really wanted to like be better at it, right? I wanted to learn more about it, but I was I was underage at the time, I was 17, so I couldn't, like, I wasn't able to live with him, I wasn't able to be with him all the time, I had school, I had other priorities, you know, so he couldn't always teach me about Yu-Gi-Oh! And a lot of his friends had stopped playing, so 
he kind of started to not like Yu-Gi-Oh as much as he used to, not as enjoy it, not enjoy it as much as he used to. However, I saw that this was a big part of his life and I wanted him to keep up with it. So I one day I called him and I was like, hey, Nod, I know that you really, really love Yu-Gi-Oh, right? And he's like, yeah, of course. And I was like, what if you tried doing a channel again? Take back the channel that you and your friends aren't doing anymore. You were the only one uploading anyways. So why don't you give that a try? And I think you'll really like it. So it started off as my idea. However, I didn't know enough about Yu-Gi-Oh! to actually be a part of the channel all that much. I did do a series called Dueling My Girlfriend, and I love those videos so much because I'm so bad at the game, but I am such a little bundle of giggles. And honestly, if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. Um, but he did most of the deck profiles, and he became, eventually over time, the face of the channel. While I did all the editing and the management and the social media promotions and all that stuff, he became known as Nod of Invoked 101, while I was just the girlfriend that most people don't know about as the channel grew. And it made me feel a little bad, beyond, to be honest, because I really wanted to be a part of the channel, so I decided I'm going to make my own channel. <laughs> and that sounds a little greedy. But also another huge thing was that when I offered, you know, here's the idea for Invoked 101, I, uh, I had all these ideas, these crazy ideas in my head. And I was like, I want to do this series. I want to do this video about this discussion. I want to do that. And I had all these different ideas. But as Invoked 101 became more of a deck profile channel, I couldn't put my ideas out there without people like going, eh, it's not a deck profile, and not watching it. So I wanted to make this channel um, so that I could have a little bit of, hi, I'm, I'm a person and I know about Yu-Gi-Oh, but I also had a place to put all my ideas. These channels are actually still linked. I kind of consider them both to be team channels. Even though he is the major face of Invoked 101 and I'm major face of Angel of Alchemy, um, we're still working together. These are both still our channels and we're both still going to be showing up in both channels all the time. I'm going to be on Invoked 101, he's going to be here doing uh, duels with me hopefully soon, uh, so keep an eye out for that. But um, that's why I don't do deck profiles on here. However, speaking of deck profiles and which ones I'm going to be uploading, I hopefully am going to be doing a Medolce one very soon um, because I realized that even though there's only really one new Medolce card coming out, I really wanted to update my deck. I wasn't very proud of my last Medolce deck profile and a lot of people didn't like it. So I wanted to give it another shot. So definitely go subscribe to Invoke 21 if you're not already, although I very strongly doubt that you're not already subscribed to Invoke 21 since a lot of you guys came here from that channel. Um, but keep an eye out for my updated Medolce deck. Hopefully you'll like it. Anyways, this has been my Q&A video. Sorry if it's a little awkward. Um, that's just kind of who I am. And um, anyways, I, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. It, it means the world to me. This was a huge step for me to open up my own channel and see it doing so well, so fast. It's so encouraging and I just really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Anyways, keep building, keep playing, keep discussing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!